Hello and welcome to Veterinary Instrumentation's latest episode of Under the Skin, a videography and animation series introducing key devices and techniques used during orthopaedic surgery. In this episode, we're looking at how a dynamic locking plate, or DLP, is used as a neutralisation plate for oblique or spiral fracture fixation. So, let's go under the skin. A DLP with its distinctive figure of eight shaped holes can be used in numerous ways, depending on the type of fracture being treated and the desired surgical result. A DLP allows a surgeon to choose between a locking or a non-locking screw at each hole. Each figure of eight shaped hole has a threaded end to accept a locking screw. The other end is a non-threaded oval hole of the same design as a DCP plate hole. Locking technology offers a very secure plating construct. The threaded screw heads lock into the threaded plate holes, creating a rigid, angle-stable construct. Where axial compression is not appropriate or achievable, the DLP can be used in purely locking mode as a neutralisation or bridging plate. For an oblique fracture, primary stabilisation followed by a neutralisation plate is usually appropriate. A neutralisation plate protects the primary fixation, for example, lag screws. The primary repair stabilises the fracture to some of the forces it is subject to, enabling the bone to take some load. The neutralisation plate neutralises the remaining forces on the bone, making the repair strong enough to withstand the full forces of weight bearing while the bone heals. Specific equipment is required for using a DLP in this way and all equipment must be appropriate for the size of implants being used. A pilot drill, a locking screw drill guide, a depth gauge, bending levers, a screwdriver. Other videos in this series have described the use of the depth gauge and the bending levers. Equipment is also required for the primary repair. In this example, we are using lag screws, so a clearance drill bit for the glide hole and an insert sleeve of the appropriate size will be needed. The lag screws can be placed through the DLP, although this is technically difficult. The primary repair is therefore usually performed prior to plate placement. In this example, the oblique fracture will be stabilised using two lag screws placed in a craniocaudal direction to create compression across and perpendicular to the fracture. The fracture is stabilised and compressed using reduction forceps. Each lag screw should be placed perpendicular to the fracture. The near cortex is drilled using the clearance drill which has the same outer diameter as the screws to be used. The insert sleeve is then placed into the hole and the far cortex is drilled with the pilot drill. A countersink is used to create a small depression in the bone surface. This allows the head of the screw to seat better on the bone. The depth of the hole is measured with the depth gauge and the appropriate length of screw is selected. When the lag screw is inserted, the screw thread will only grip in the far cortex which creates compression across the fracture line as the screw is tightened. Care must be taken not to over-tighten a lag screw as there is a risk of fracturing the bone. One, two or three lag screws may be placed sequentially. They should be spaced a distance at least half the diameter of the bone away from each other and or from the fracture. If the DLP is being used in purely locking mode, as in this example, only approximate contouring of the plate to the bone is required, which can save time during surgery. 
A one to three millimeter gap is acceptable between the plate and the bone surface, which is beneficial for fracture healing as soft tissue and periosteum can be left intact beneath the plate. However, if the DLP is being placed using non-locking screws, perfect plate contouring is essential. The plate is applied to the bone and positioning and contouring are checked. Temporary fixation of the plate to the bone will be helpful using either plate or bone holding forceps or a K wire drilled into the bone through a locking wire guide. Once the plate is appropriately positioned, the first pilot hole is drilled using the locking screw drill guide. The device screws into the locking plate hole to ensure a perfect 90 degree angle of the pilot hole relative to the plate hole. This device must be used for every locking screw. The locking screw drill guide is removed and the depth of the pilot hole is measured using the depth gauge to ensure selection of the appropriate length of screw. The locking screw is placed in the usual manner and subsequent screws are then placed sequentially. The exact order of screw placement for a neutralization plate is not prescriptive, but it is not necessary to fill every screw hole. Typically, three to five screws are spread out over the proximal and distal sections of bone. No screws are placed in the central portion of the plate over the fracture. For further information on the VI range of instruments and implants for internal fixation, please visit our website or contact our specialist technical support team. Join our online community by following our social media pages, keeping up to date with the latest releases of training and education material, as well as company updates.